Our first talk is from Chen Wen Wan. Right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Chen Wen Wan. I'm from Tufts University. Um, the title of my work is Enhanced ha Mounted Eye Tracking Data Analysis Using Super Resolution. Today, I'm going to talk about the software solution for enhancing head-mounted eye tracking data analysis. So essentially, uh, my cognitive scientist co colleagues at Tufts, they are facing some problems when they analysis their uh, large-scale head-mounted eye tracking data. So I'm going to provide their solutions. Um, the broad picture about today's talk will be what is eye tracking uh, research, why they're so popular. So basically, uh, so th here's the outline of my talk today. I'm going to start with the introduction and motivation, and then introduce the proposed system, S show some experimental results and comparison, and then discussion, conclusion of future work. Um, I'm going to start with introduction and motivation. In this section, we'll answer two big questions. What are we talking in terms of eye tracking technology, and why they're so popular? So eye tracking technology is a technology that allows researchers to monitor pupil position and ended up predicting where a person is looking at. So the development of near-infrared technology allows us to monitor eye movements in an unobtrusive manner while the participants are moving around uh, without realizing that eye movements are being recorded. And why we're so interested in it is because there is a theory called eye-mind hypothesis. <clears throat> so they are telling you a relationship between the eye and the human brain. Generations of researchers are conducting human behavior hypothesis and designing possible experiments motivi motivated by this strong relationship between eye gaze points and the visual attention focus, especially between the fixation and the overt visual attention. Um, there are some popular research terminologies that my uh, psychology colleagues are investigating. So one is called ROI, is short for region of interest, which is the specific portion of the field of vision that has higher importance. The fixation is a kind of eye movement that where, when the pupil remains relatively stable over a stationary object of interest. And the saccas is a kind of rapid eye movement that link between the fixation. And then there's a um, terminology called smooth persuade. That means your eye movement are tracking along with the moving objects. And then the scan path is a series, a bunch of um, fixation and uh, saccas that reflects observers viewing behavior. To capture those kind of um, eye movements, there are people using two types of eye trackers. The traditional one it looks, like, uh, looks like this. So essentially, there are a bunch of um, infrared cameras that are sitting in the bottom of the screen and illuminates the, eye, the, the participant's eye and they capture a bunch of high resolution eye, eye images. Uh, those are really uh, popular for reading assignments for a uh, usability test. Uh, for uh, human machine interaction. So I can just put my participants in front of a computer, then just mount the remote eye trackers, capture the images. The capture rate can, uh, is usually between 30 to 500 hertz. Those are not so fast. And then, but they're totally enough for uh, those type of indoor uh, experiments. For some physiology research, for micro eye movement, those type of tower eye tracker are used a lot. The speed can be up to 2,000 hertz. However, those stationary eye trackers require participants to sit still or relatively motionless in front of uh, computers in order to capture stable eye movements. So here come to like, some questions. What if I wanted to investigate the eye movements that when our participants cannot uh, sit still? Let's say if we want to investigate road driving behavior, I want to design some uh, advertisement board on the highway that will be less disturbing to the drivers. Like what kind of road signs they pay, pay more attention to? Uh, or if I want to investigate um, the participants when they're looking, uh, their eye movements when they're looking around in Times Square, like what kind of billboards they're paying more attention to? Um, 
or what if I want to uh, investigate some scan path when my participant is looking at a nature scene and they're, or they're walking around in museums and when they're appreciating arts or something like that. So there are so many interesting topics that researchers want to study that do not allow them to sit the participant in front of a computer, not move. So here it comes to our hat-mounted eye trackers. There are usually two types. One is with a helmet. The other one is a just simply a hat-mounted eye tracking glasses. Recently, hat-mounted eye trackers were developed for researchers to monitor and capture eye movements and their field of vision information with, with no constriction, or re restriction on their movements. They totally open the door to investigating and research questions that the traditional remote eye tracker would never have approached. In other words, participants are no longer forced to sit still in front of a machine all the time to complete their design task. Instead, they can move around, they can interact with the surrounding world they, while their um, eye movements are captured. So here, I listed some um, popular eye, tracker, eye trackers, high mounted eye trackers. Uh, they're Toby, it's in my pupil labs. So uh, we use Toby a lot, uh, probably three years ago. But Toby is no longer on the market anymore. They're bought by Apple last uh, August. I don't know what they're going to do, but maybe they'll do something promising. For those um, eye pu um, hat mounted eye trackers, they have something in common. They have two infrared cameras that capture the eye movements, and they have a front scene camera that can capture the f uh, field of vision. They have a um, algorithms that behind that will f um, form a mathematic equations that will predict in each frame where and what the participant is looking at. Uh, probably. Uh, right. So, yes, I want to play the video. It's playing here, but it's not playing. Uh, it's oh, playing here. Oh, oh, great. So here's like a 10 seconds video. Thank you so much. 10 seconds video that, that um, show you what the output for those psychologists look like. And then the orange dot indicates in each frame where the participants are looking at. This is a um, indoor case study to investigate a human behavior, a human uh, problem solving, like especially for engineer students, how they design tools for robots. And then the figure on the left, the figure on the right, shows a plot of relevant publications found through Google Scholar search engine about how money eye tracking technology. The number of research publications increased a lot, increased dramatically over the past decades. And I, the reason is the eye tracking sensors, especially hat mounted one, has become easier and cheaper to get. Then they have been used a lot in different research fields, such as cognitive psychology, early child de um, development, education, marketing, consumer science, human machine interaction, sports, medicine, uh, virtual reality, and augmented reality. Let me conclude a little bit. The hat money eye tracker allow researchers to expand their investigation to a more ecological valid, ecological valid experiment study. Like our psychology team has done some really impressive work using eye tracker for human problem solving and navigation, spatial learning ability. Um, the head mounted eye tracker provides two main benefits. They make a device aware of what the user is interested in at any given point of time. They provide an additional way to understand the in and interact with the uh, interesting surroundings. Um, so for an analysis, they just go frame by frame and uh, you know write down what the participants are looking at. And then we're trying to uh, um, develop solutions for them. We have a um, <clears throat> proposed system that is using computer to predict, to like c uh, classify the objects the person is looking at. Or we using those uh, computer vision technology to help them accelerate their manual annotation. And then let me back up a little bit. The eye tracking research community is interested in analyzing the details of what and where a person is looking at in order to retrieve the fine details of the captured eye tracking video data and a further analysis in it. The researchers need the partial image, especially the region of interest, to be as clear as possible. So there are some 
technical challenges. So first, we need to find a way to locate the area of interest people are fixating at while wearing hat-mounted eye trackers. Um, as I just said, the orange dot is the gaze point, which is different with the fixation data. <clears throat> they, the eye tracker company, they didn't provide the fixation along with the front sync, uh, front sync video. And then we need to generate a high resolution image from a raw re resolution image in order to display the ROI as clear as possible. And we also need to figure a way that will introduce less unpredictable background noise and an illumination variance. Here is the proposed solution for enhancing hat mounted eye tracking data analysis using a super resolution. Um, so we fit in, the fit in the system with eye tracking scene video data along with the eye tracking fixation data. And then we've, we'll figure out the region of interest, we crop it based on the fixation location. Then, then we're, gonna use, we're gonna apply super resolution image transform to lower resolution image. And then we generate high resolution ROI image with fine details. And also here, I show a visual uh, explanation of my flowchart. <clears throat> um, so the, the figure on the right top shows the, the raw fixation data that generated by the eye tracker company. And then on, in the, on the bottom, the right bottom, is the raw data. So on the top uh, image, we can see that it provides the fixation uh, number, the fixation start time, fixation end time, the duration of each fixation, and the location of each fixa uh, fixation. And on the bottom file, we know um, the internal clock of the eye tracker corresponding to which frame of the front scene, uh, front scene video. Because the infrared camera and the front scene camera, they have different uh, frequencies. So when we add additional interpolation between the generated files, we then we'll figure out the start frame and end frame of each fixation and where are those locations on each frame. Those uh, you know, code can be downloaded in our research website as well. And then after the first step, then we'll, the, this step, the goal is to generate high resolution output image from a low resolution input. To overcome this problem, we select the state of, we use the state of art deep learning based super resolution image. The main purpose is because they're fast. And deep learning based resolution has received substantial uh, attention from the computer vision research community and it has a wide range of real life applications. Here are listed some popular and state of art super resolution image uh, transform. The SRCN is actually the first one, uh, the first fully convolutional, uh, convolutional neural network for a single image super resolution. And then VDSR, they use a very deep neural network. For SR ResNet, they use ResNet. And then they, we also have SRGAN and SRDenseNet. In the next slide, I show, I show some preliminary results of uh, implementing VRS, uh, VDSR, very deep SR, SRResNet, SRDenseNet. They were implemented in PyTorch. Uh, PyTorch. Um, so the red square indicates that my uh, region of interest. And then we scale, the, we scale the small image up to, uh, the scale factor is four. And then I show some results using the different type of image super resolution. Other than that, we also evaluation using some no reference image quality measure. As we all know, image quality measure is a type of method that will score your image based on the quality of the image. So he, on the table, here's a table that listed all the no reference image quality measure that uh, developed from our lab. Um, why we're using no reference is because we don't have a ground truth for our specific eye tracking data. And then, so for uh, AME, AME, -E, EME, log AME are all for grayscale image. They're, 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 they're focused on the contrast. They measure the contrast of the image. And then for TDME and CRME are for color image. Because the uh, an SR dense net the output of it is grayscale. So we, in here, we use AME, EME, and log AME to, to evaluate the output. And then at the end, we find out that so far, ResNet will give the best result. 
The other reason why I use no reference image quality measure is because I want to use this type of uh, image quality measure as an automatic selector to choose the best performance super resolution algorithm for different types of eye tracking data. So the input will be how many eye track. Here's an algorithm for, for using, add, it, add this uh, image quality measure. So we, we use the how many eye tracking. Uh, we'll fit in the algorithm with eye tracking uh, data, the captured movement data, captured eye movements data, and then we convert them into individual frames, and then we, we apply super resolution, then we use different type of no reference image quality, and we choose the super resolution algorithm that give you the best, best results. And then we have some discussion about potential applications. The proposed system has many potential real life applications when these algorithms can be real time deployed to augmented reality asset, integrating with eye tracking. Uh, we're actually developing this. We are putting a uh, pupil lab add-on with the HoloLens. And then, for example, for military application, the proposed system can be used to color the uh, friend or foe that or enemy that is in a far range from you. So then the algorithms can be automatically run in the background and be guided by user's ga eye gaze for a much narrow field of vision. When a person from a far away is detected, the uh, region of interest contains person of interest will be zoomed in and further enhanced. Then the enemy or the friends will be detectable or and more uh, recognizable. And the other application can be is used for uh, library or museum tools. So imagine that in the future you don't have to move around in a whole museum. You can just move around with limited um, body movements, and then you can see all the arts you want to see. And those applications can also be used to help handicapped pers handicapped people when they are uh, used when they're used in a, their daily life applications. Let me conclude. This paper proposed a novel framework for enhancing the hat monitor eye tracking data analysis using state of our computer vision tools. And also for, uh, furthermore, we discuss and demonstrate real life applications using our proposed system. The future work contains, we will definitely, you know, train the deep learning models for our own specific data. The, the problem is that we don't have a ground truth to train the model. So that would be the big problem. So right now we're just using the pre-trained model that by, generated by other data sets. And a user-friendly uh, GUI will be proposed for those people from outside of um, engineer background to use. And here's the reference. And then uh, thanks for uh, top school of engineer, Center of Apply, uh, Apply and Brain, and then US Army Natick Soldier Research. And here are all the author of this work. And then thanks for time, questions.